I now come to the last figure that you will find in this summary for policymakers. And this is, uh, some people say this may be a game changer. Uh, I don't know. But it is a figure that we uh, who have prepared this summary for policymakers have for a long time had a, a bad stomach feeling. Not because this figure is wrong. This figure is very robust. But because we thought the governments might not like it because it has such a powerful message. So what do we do? We plot on the horizontal axis all the carbon emissions that have been blown out into the air since industrialization. Every tree that has been cut, every brick of coal that has been burned, every liter of petroleum that has been used, that is summed up and that is the so-called cumulative total anthropogenic carbon dioxide emission from 1850. In units that are obscure, we were told by the governments, uh, PGC, petagrams of carbon, we had then to change that after what was it, 20 minutes of discussion, in the end we said, okay, let's go to the old unit you are familiar with. Um, it's just different. It's the gigatons that uh, the governments like. Um, we prefer the pentagrams, but that's, it's not relevant. It's the same number. So, that's the horizontal. And then on the vertical, we show the temperature change since that more or less same date. 1860 to 1880, so a long time ago, essentially where the footprint or the handprint that was so nicely displayed in this experiment, I've never seen that because I could talk for about a half an hour about this experiment, it's really fantastic. The fingerprint uh, was not visible on a global scale in these greenhouse gas concentration. So these are the two axes, and what you see now, if you do the historical account of what happened until the year 2010, where did we fare here on this curve? 1890, 1950, 2000, 2010. So there is a clear relationship, a proportionality between these two quantities between the total amount of emissions and the warming. It's actually fairly linear. And now come in these four scenarios that I've mentioned already for temperature and sea level rise. And if you march here along these four scenarios, you see it's a little bit uh, busy, this graph, but essentially you cannot distinguish these four scenarios. They all point into the same direction. The only distinction that you might recognize on this graph is where these scenarios stand at the end of the 21st century. So the low emission scenario at the end of the 21st century stands here, just about below 2 degrees and below 1,000 billion tons of carbon emitted. Whereas the high scenario in the year 2100 stands up here, where you are above twice that amount, 2,000 billion carbon, billion tons of carbon um, emitted, which would create a warming of about 4.5 degrees Celsius. So we are on this trajectory that shows a very clear path our choice is where we stop on this trajectory, and where we stop on this trajectory is actually decided which, by which scenario you choose. So, if you choose the low emission scenario, you stop here. The highest emission scenario, uh, you stop there. This convinced the policymakers to actually endorse this sentence as well. Limiting climate change will require substantial and sustained reductions of greenhouse gas emissions. So the end message here, the take-home 
we do have a choice. It's our choice where we stop on this trajectory. But where we stop on this trajectory, you don't decide in 2100. You would have to decide that now. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>